In this tutorial we are going to take a look at how we can use bump and normal maps in Redshift. It's fairly simple, but can be used to create very complicated and interesting shading networks. Redshift supports both bump and normal mapping technologies. These maps don't affect geometric detail like displacement maps, but simply affect lighting detail along the surface based on the UV coordinates. From a bump map, Redshift computes new surface normals, whereas normal maps already contain pre-computed surface normals. Because normal maps contain pre-computed normals, they can be cheaper to render than bump maps, and can produce smoother results. Bump maps, however, contain height field information and are very easy to use because they don't require any special pre-processing. This is the scene we are going to work on today. These oranges are what we'll be focusing on. At the moment they are completely smooth and we'll use bump and normal maps to try and make the surface more interesting. Let's do an IPR rendering to see how they look without bump mapping. As you can see it doesn't look that realistic. More like smooth plastic. I'll render an area since we only want to be focusing on the oranges. Now let's open up the hypershade window and start adding our bump mapping. Expand the orange material so we can see what we are working on. Right now the only thing that it uses is a color map. To create a normal map node, go to the Redshift tab and find a normal map node. Right click the folder button and select the normal map file. Connect the normal map node to the bump input in the orange material. Now we can see that we get bumps in the surface, not quite the way I want it to be, so I'll change the texture repeats to 7. The normal is not visible enough, so I'll boost the scale normal to a higher value. Starting to look pretty good. The small bumps really breaks up the glossy area, giving it a more realistic look. When handling normals generating using other software, you need to be aware of one thing. The y-axis of the normal map might be inverted. This can easily be fixed by activating the flip normal y option. Sometimes it can be hard to notice, so try both if you aren't sure which one is correct in your case. In Photoshop you can see how inverting the green channel does the same thing basically. Let's move on to adding our bump map using a noise that is a standard Maya node. Redshift supports many of Maya's node, including the noise texture. We want some larger bumps on our surface, so the orange doesn't look so smooth and even. First of all, let's add a bump blender, so we can combine a normal and a bump map together. The bump blender consists of four inputs and blend weights. The blend weight is basically the opacity of the overlay, where 1 is 100% visible and 0 is 0% visible. The blend weight can be driven by an image. It can be used for many purposes, but I'd say it's mainly used to combine bumps and normals together to be used in one bump material slot. Add the normal node to the base input and replace the normal node with the bump blender. Right now we won't see any difference as there is nothing to blend with. Now create a bump map node from the Redshift tab. I'll set the height scale to a higher value so you can see the effect better when, it, when we apply it. Now create a standard noise. I'll set the repeat UV to 0.7 so we get larger bumps. Crop the noise texture on the bump map input and add a bump map to layer 0 bump input in the bump blender. Set the node to additive mode and then blend weight to, uh, to 1. That's way too much, but could be nice if we were going for rotten fruit or something like that. I'll lower the bump height a bit to get more subtle result. A common confusion when using Redshift is the difference with applying your bump to the material slot versus the shading group slot. 
When you use the material slot, the bump map will be blended, or layered along with the rest of the material when using material blending. This obviously only matters if you're using material blending. If you're using material blending and do not want this behavior, you can use the shading group slot instead. I'd say that your safest bet in the beginning is to use the material slot. Now I'll do a bucket rendering and we'll compare the bumped material with the smooth material. Hope you enjoyed this video and thanks for watching.